to announce. Woo! No, but seriously, there will be no more styling or profiling from Nick Flair in Toronto. Because the Toronto Maple Leafs have traded Nikita Soshnikov to the St. Louis Blues in exchange for a 2019 fourth round pick. So first of all, I'm going to be talking about this trade as if I'm talking to Leafs and Blues fans at the same time. There's no point separating it. And second, you might be like, Steve, didn't you just say that your basement was screwed up? Oh, no, no, it's still screwed up. We had to tear out all the carpet in the basement after we got flooded yesterday, so it's just a cement floor. I've put down rugs and towels and couch cushions to try to absorb the echo. Fun, fun time. So the question is always good or bad trade. Now whether or not it ends up being a good or bad trade, that's left up to the future. A little bit different from the Stempniak for Steen and Koliakovo trade, which didn't seem very good at the time and got worse as time went on. So it's hard to say whether or not this is a good or bad trade, but I can tell you that right now in February 2018, it makes sense for the Toronto Maple Leafs and for the St. Louis Blues. All right, so Blues fans, who you get in Leafs fans who you losing. Nikita Soshnikov has been a weird figure since he's come to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I had a friend text me yesterday, oh, what pick was Soshnikov for the Leafs? He wasn't a pick at all. He was a Russian free agent. They signed him from Atlant in the KHL, who actually, a few years ago, a friend of mine gave me this terrifying doll from the hockey team Atlant of the KHL. And he was telling me some ridiculous backstory where like the toy manufacturer, the rubber they used, it smelled terrible. So to combat that smell and make it more child friendly, yeah, it still smells like vanilla. I'm not kidding. So Soshnikov used to play for the vanilla team. So my first impression with Soshnikov, having not seen him played but just kind of following along in box scores, was who the hell is this guy? He always played on the Marlies fourth line, so he's playing fourth line in the AHL, and he's not really putting up that many points. In his rookie season in the AHL in 52 games, he had 18 goals, which was pretty good, but just 10 assists, so 28 points. Plus 26, the Marlies were stacked that year. That year they finished with the third best record in AHL history. And then to my surprise, when the Leafs sold off everyone, because that was the year that the Leafs finished in last place, Soshnikov was one of the guys who got called up, along with Kasperi Kapanen, Zach Hyman, and William Nylander. And he looked alright. Two goals, three assists, five points in 11 games, but that's not what got Leaf fans interested in Soshnikov. He just had this flair about him, this pizzazz. Go look at his first career NHL goal. It was against the Washington Capitals' Philip Grubauer. Snipe off the bar, ping! And throughout the silent arena, all you hear is Soshnikov. Woo! So he's got this flair, he's obviously got a shot if that was any indicator, but he was also this maniac who would just run brain first into every hit, yell and scream at guys, apparently in Russian, and was just a super pest. And then of course his season kind of staggers to a halt because he kind of misses a hit and gets a concussion. Ended up playing for the Marlies in the playoffs and was good, 5 goals to assist 7 points in 11 games, but he didn't play the whole playoffs because he was still battling injury. Next season he's not quite ready for NHL camp because of the injury, so he starts in the AHL until eventually getting called up to the Leafs and being basically a Leaf full time. Five goals, four assists, nine points in 56 games, but that wasn't really his role. I think it frustrated a lot of Leaf fans that offense wasn't really Soshnikov's role because he always showed the potential. Like Blues fans, wait do you see this guy for the first time. All the raw skills are there. The speed, the snarl, the shot. But the shot didn't get him into the lineup, the snarl did. And the fact that Mike Babcock trusted him to kill penalties, which I I'm surprised that the Leafs let a player like that go because Babs doesn't exactly trust a whole lot of people to do that. So earlier this season there was this weird thing where like he needs to get called up or he can actually leave for the KHL and if he plays three more games he then requires waivers to be sent back down so he plays three games and then he's in this weird purgatory and by purgatory I mean IR because apparently he was hurt but like apparently that was legit so then it gets kind of weird Kapanen gets called up and plays amazingly so they're going to keep him the Leafs are in a super roster crunch but they're able to buy some time because Soshnikov is on the IR they can put him on a conditioning stint the Leafs have done that before goes to the AHL he's a point of game player in those five games and I didn't see him but every Everyone I asked said he looked fantastic. In fact, whenever he's been in the AHL this season, he's been fantastic. Seven goals, 10 assists for 17 points in 19 games. Conditioning stint ends and the Leafs are like, yeah, no, he's still hurt. And anybody who saw him play is like, pardon? But it's hilarious because the rules are written in a way that say, well, the team can decide whether or not he's okay. So Blues fans, my assumption is your doctors will think he's okay. But at least you get him because Soshnikov would not have dropped to the Blues if he went on waivers and you only paid a fourth round pick next year to get him. Blues fans, I think most most Leaf fans you ask will tell you that Nikita Soshnikov is probably an NHL player. I will tell you that Nikita Soshnikov is an NHL player. In my opinion, he just is. But you look at the Leafs on the left, they have Zach Hyman, Patrick Marlowe, JVR, Leo Komarov. But then you look at the right wing, which I think is where Nikita Soshnikov plays most of the time, even though he's left-handed, and the Leafs have William Nylander, Mitch Marner, 
Connor Brown, and Kasperi Kapanen. When Sash could go up and down with waivers, it was all gravy, but the second that went away, there was a roster crunch and something had to be done. So what I've learned from talking about trades in the past is these videos kind of become a time capsule. So remember the context of the time. The Leafs are extremely good on the wing and there was no room for Sash. Then there's the Leo Komarov debate. Now a lot of Leafs fans have referred to Sashnikov as little Leo. I know I did it. And you know why? Because he plays like a jerk, which is fine when he's your jerk. And look, I think there's a few things that Sashnikov can do that Leo Komarov just can't. But if you actually think that they play a similar style, which I mean really it's just the bang and crash part of it that's similar. Look at how much time Leo Komarov has missed versus how much time Sash has missed. We sort of talked about this at a Puck Talks event that we did just last night. It might be a bit of a size thing. Which, in the words of Marcus Stroman, height doesn't measure heart. Let's tweet about it. There are lots of short guys in the NHL who ended up making it. You know, Martin St. Louis if you go way back. Ryan Ellis I remember as a guy who everyone said was too short. But the thing about those guys is they're crazy thick. Spell it with two C's or whatever you want, but they are thick. Built. Sash is listed at 5'11", 185. And if you've ever seen him in his Under Armour, he's obviously in shape, but he's slender. Komarov's the same height, but coming in around 210. And if you've ever seen him in his Under Armour, not so much. Komarov's built Ford tough, is what I'm saying. But it might not even be that. It might be that, like, Sashnikov reminds me a lot more of Mikhail Grabowski than Leo Komarov. No regard for his own safely. Just brain first into everything. And there comes the concern if you're the St. Louis Blues. A bit injury prone. And I hate the term injury prone, but it is worth noting that this guy guy hasn't really put together a full uninjured season in North America yet. Which is why I'm going to throw something out there for the Blues. Blues fans, you can look at it as, well, we got this crazy energy guy and we can put him on a line with Sabatka and we can just drive everybody nuts. He's going to be all energized for the playoffs because he's barely played this year. He's going to be fresh as a daisy and he's just going to pound everyone into the ground. I think the Blues might be better served to, you still have him in an energy role, but have it be a more offensive one. I just feel like if really given the opportunity Sosh could do it. Look at his numbers in the AHL this season. The Marlies are sick, granted, but Sosh, when he was playing there, was actually playing in a role up in the lineup, which he hasn't really done since coming to this continent. He was a fourth liner on the Leafs, but he was a fourth liner on the Marlies as well. They played him with Rich Clune and Freddie Gauthier. And you can read about that in the profile down below. I actually got to talk to some of his teammates. Sheldon Keefe, the Marlies coach, actually gave him the option to like play with William Nylander when he was in the minors, and he said something to the effect of, I think I like like the goat. Freddie Gauthier is the goat for the uninitiated. I don't know, I just think he's got the speed, he's got the shot, and he's not a guy who needs someone to go get the puck for him. He could do something really good offensively, if given the chance. And then I look at the Blues lines and I'm like, ah, where's that chance? Worst case scenario, he's playoff depth for you, which I was hoping he would be for the Leafs. So the bummer is that the Leafs might be losing a good player, an NHL player with some promise. One who they develop, might I add. But other than the money that they spent to develop him, that's the the only thing that they paid. They didn't have to draft him, they didn't have to get him in a trade, all he did was play well for the organization while he was here when he wasn't hurt, and then he got the Leafs a fourth round pick. What's wrong with that? The only thing I could see that would make Leafs fans really mad is, oh, he could have just done what Komarov does, which I, I don't think he could. In the trade, the Blues get a big maybe. Maybe he'll be healthy? Maybe he won't be. Maybe he'll be able to crack our roster? Maybe he won't. Maybe someone will get hurt and we'll have to depend on him huge. Maybe he'll become a star. You just don't know. And all they give up is a fourth. With the Leafs, at least you get a fourth. You get an asset you might use, and I say might because a fourth round pick, how often does that become an NHL star? You never know. In exchange for a guy you were not using. Josh Levo just hanging out in the corner like, so. As of right now, it's a super minor move. If Sashnikov becomes a huge star, it's not such a minor move. If the Leafs go and snag a guy like Victor Arvidsson in the fourth round, it's not such a minor move. And if neither of those things happen, then it's nothing but a trade that kind of made sense at the time. And let's not forget, this brings the Leafs down to 49 contracts. They were at 50, which is the roster limit. So let's pretend the Leafs wanted somebody at the deadline and the other team wanted a draft pick, a first or a second or whatever. The Leafs literally couldn't do that. You could have just waved Soshnikov, you might say. Well, then you wouldn't get a fourth, would you? So, what do you have to say about the trade? Who do you think won? The St. Louis Blues, the Toronto Maple Leafs, or do you think it just makes sense? How could the Leafs have avoided this? Where will he fit in the Blues lineup? And also, don't forget to check out my link down below to my profile on Nikita Soshnikov. I wrote it back in 2016, but there's some gems in there. And also down below, don't forget to check out a link for some of my merch, which is wonderful! So that is it for Nikita Soshnikov's time as a Toronto Maple Leaf, but socks. Nick Flair, 
thank you for being on the Toronto Maple Leafs, and thank you for watching. So click like if you like this video, click subscribe if you really liked it, tell all your friends, and let me know what you think down below.